I decided that if I wanted to be an animator, I should be an intern for four months and study the art of animation. So, I went to AKA Cartoon Incorporated to study how the animators were working. So two weeks later I decided that I should rent a hotel room for 10 days so I can get settled while watching the animators. Here's my experience. Day 1. I set up my room, and drove to the studio. When I got there, three voice actors were excited to see me. Tony Sampson, Janice Jodd, and Aaron Fitzgerald gave me a warm welcome. I decided to let the main cast, the Eds and the other neighbors in the cul-de-sac, have a small party at my hotel room that night. It wasn't so wild. I spent the time chatting, smoking a cigar, and eating a Whopper with cheese I got from the nearby Burger King, while drinking Diet Coke. Then the idea of a secret episode for us to enjoy came up. Day 2. At 6 o'clock, I wrote the script. It was a fun little episode where Eddie tries to sell fireworks for $12 a rocket. So I went out for brunch with the cast. When I got back, it wasn't in my hotel room. I found the script. It said, Lose Your Head, by Freddie G. I hoped it was a good episode. So we filmed it. But once we had the beta episode done, all of us looked uneasy. The videotape was starting to burn the VHS in my hotel room. So, we took it out and decided to try it the next day. Day 3. I went into the viewing room, but the cast said they'd rather wait outside. But my boss, Clint Earl Maple Sr. decided to supervise me. The tape was in my briefcase with three cigars, a .22 revolver, a bottle of Diet Coke, my study supplies, three pens, a ruler, my wallet, and some sunglasses. I slowly tucked it into my VHS. It was running fine. It started with an FBI warning, then the Cartoon Network logo. Then the episode started. It started with the intro with the heads fooling around. But instead of Double D's funny sound when he falls down, it's a blood-curdling scream. The title card was a pale blue background with the words, Lose Your Head, in the normal lettering. The episode started with Kevin, Maz, Eddie, Ed, Double D, Sarah, Rolf, and Jimmy were all dressed up and sad. They walked to a cemetery, and sat down and paid their respects to Johnny. His grave was a small stone. It said, Here lies Johnny, rest in peace. Maz left flowers, Double D put down an American flag and they left. They all walked quietly into their homes with gloomy looks on their faces. Then the episode cut to black. An error message popped up. Me and my boss decided to try again later tomorrow. But, we both knew something was wrong with that episode. That's why we had to see more of it. Day 4, the finale. My boss reminded me about that freaky crap episode we started yesterday. I took my coffee and sandwich from Dunkin' Donuts to the viewing room, and we put the tape back. My boss's apprentice, John Poselt, said he wanted to watch. So all three of us decided to turn off the lights, lock the door, and cover the windows with paper. It started back up, and there's more of the episode. The Eds were in Double D's garage talking about Johnny's passing. How sad! Said Double D, nearly crying. Now you get your head straight and knock the sad crap out of your head! He was a prick and you know it! Eddie spat out tastefully. I never expected to hear Eddie raging like this. Double D stood up to Eddie and said, Stop being that good for nothing! Johnny was an innocent little boy just like you. You should get that garbage out of your head. Eddie punched Double D in the face. Then he picked up a two times four and struck Double D in the side of his head. Double D had blood coming from his ears, and bone fragment and brains pouring out of his mouth. No, really? Said Double D choking on his own blood. Eddie picked up a mallet and crushed it down over Double D's head. It smashed his skull and tenderized his brain. Double D died. What did you do, Eddie? Said Ed cluelessly. Eddie chased Ed through the cul-de-sac with the mallet. Ed took a sharp turn past Rolf who was giving chickens some food. Eddie swung for Ed but accidentally killed Rolf in the process. He tried hitting Ed's chest but instead hit Rolf's. What the semi crap is wrong with you, Ed boy? Rolf asked his last words. Eddie still chased Ed. He found a car and drove it. Eddie jumped on Kevin's bike and raced up to Ed. He screwed up and crashed into his own house. Jimmy was on the ground under the left front of the minivan. Sarah sat down and cried in front of Jimmy's corpse. Kevin ran up to Eddie and said, What's wrong, dork? Eddie slowly paced up to Kevin from Ed's kitchen, with a knife and came in for the call, but Eddie fell down with a bullet in his back. A man in a cloak visibly ran from the scene. Yeah, my friend, Eddie! Yelled Sarah at Kevin. The credits went up. 
F. Gordon Outlaws the director. That's all I saw before I pulled out my point .22 and shot the damn television. I couldn't believe what I just saw. A man in a cloak from behind me whispered. Do you like it? I rotated at the speed of a heartbeat and pointed the point .22 at his head. But, he ran away. I chased him through the hallway until he crashed through a glass door, stood on a ledge, jumped off that balcony, and landed softly on his toes next to the road. I was speechless. The tape is still around, I put it up online for about 22 cents. It is in horrible condition. If you buy it, burn it immediately. Don't watch it. And whatever you do, don't put it on YouTube. That's all.